The AGM-84D Harpoon is an anti-ship cruise missile. Rather than using a rocket motor, the missile is propelled by a turbojet, giving it the ability to cruise at a set altitude over a long distance. The Harpoon is primarily designed to be used in conjunction with the air-to-ground radar for acquiring ships at great distances. We'll cover the two main deployment modes, targeting modes, and use with the targeting pod, along with tips and issues for early access. The air-to-ground radar will be coming later on, however we will go over how to use the release mode for it. Harpoon Setup and Overview We'll start with the stores page, and how to set up our weapon. We'll find them listed as HPD, Harpoon D. The missile takes 24 seconds to warm up when selected, which is displayed in the top left. On the right, we have the weapon status. This will inform us if the weapon is ready to fire, or if something is set incorrectly. By default, the weapon is set to bearing only launch mode. Along the side, we have HPTP, Harpoon Turnpoint. When boxed, this will set our currently selected waypoint as the initial point for our harpoon, whereby it will fly to the waypoint before turning onto its own search for a target. Below we have fixed point. Rather than using a waypoint as reference, we can create a quick fixed point to use if we want to launch multiple harpoons onto the same area without a dedicated waypoint. Harpoon turn point and fixed point are mutually exclusive. Only one can be active at a time. We have the step button to cycle between all stations with harpoons loaded, allowing us to program each one individually. UFC, this brings up the configurable options for active search range, self-destruct range and flight bearing. Moving round to the bottom left, we've got our program button, allowing us to cycle between the various programs. Each program is unique to each station and they are not shared. You have to program each harpoon individually. On each program we can see our currently selected mode, the flight profile, terminal guidance mode, and the active search start distance, self-destruct range, and flight bearing. On the left we've got term for setting the terminal guidance mode. This activates when the missile detects its target. Skim mode will have the missile descend to skim the waves. This will result in an impact on the waterline of the ship. The second mode, pop or pop up, causes the missile to skim the sea and then pop up to 500 feet, about 5 miles from the target, where it will then dive onto the target. This is intended to cause damage to the superstructure, radar and weapon systems. Next, flight profile. This sets the height our missile will cruise at, medium for 15,000 feet, high for 35,000 feet, and low 5,000 feet. Please note that after launch, the missile will only ever descend or maintain level flight. Ensure that you are at or above your desired cruise height, otherwise the missile will maintain its current altitude as it will not climb. Cruising higher increases the range of the missile, but of course also increases the risk of being detected and intercepted. Because the harpoon is dropped from our aircraft, the minimum launch altitude is 2500 feet. An altitude warning will appear on the HUD and stores page if you pass below this. Finally we have our launch mode. This will cycle between bearing only launch, the default, or range and bearing launch mode. In range and bearing mode, the harpoon will fly to and attack our designated point. This is used primarily with the radar, but can also function with a weapons designated waypoint or a targeting pod designation. We keep the flight profile and terminal modes as before, and we gain the seek option in range and bearing mode. This sets the distance before our designated point that the radar on our harpoon missile will activate and start seeking targets. Small being 5.4 nautical miles, medium 10.8, and large 16.2 nautical miles before our designated point. As we are providing the bearing and range via a known designated point, we do not have to set the search, self-destruct, and bearing options. These are configured automatically. On our HUD, we can see a couple details. We'll see the status, 
This can be one of many messages and serves to tell us if we are ready to launch, time until range, or if we have an error with our setup. Below that are selected weapon and release mode, and the range to target if one is designated. Weapons safety. Before we start with weapons employment, we'll talk about how the weapon works and safe usage. The Harpoon missile has an active radar seeker built into the nose. It scans out ahead to find a target. The issue here is that it does not discriminate between friendly, hostile or neutral ships. This means we need to be very careful with where the missile is active. In an ideal world, we want the missile to only look for targets within the smallest possible area so as to avoid collateral damage. To do this, we've got active search and self-destruct ranges to control our search area. For example, in a complicated mission, we could configure our weapon to fly over a friendly force, and once it has passed them, activate the radar, and then, should it fail to find a target, we set a self-destruct range beyond that target, so as to avoid the missile attacking anything unintended. This information is represented on the HSI with the harpoon selected. We'll see the flight bearing of our harpoon, and on it the active search start marked with a short line, and the self destruct point marked with an X. We will now move on to the various ways of employing the weapon. Bearing only launch mode. This mode is only intended for use against targets that you cannot detect by direct means. Because we do not have a specific target location, this is also the most dangerous. We'll start with the basic setup. We do not require a harpoon, turn point or fixed point. With NEVA selected, we simply use our aircraft's position as the initial point. We set up our desired cruise altitude, terminal guidance and then press UFC and we'll enter the active search range. This is the distance from our initial point that the missile will start its active radar search for targets. As we do not have an initial point set, our aircraft serves as this point. You could set this to zero to have it active the moment it leaves our aircraft, or to any distance within the missile's range. Next, the self-destruct range. You want this to be beyond where you expect the target to be. Of course, you could set this to over 100 miles, effectively further than the missile can fly, but this could endanger other vessels behind our target. Finally, we'll set the bearing from our aircraft that we believe the target to be in. We can see all this on the HSI with our flight bearing, active range, and self-destruct cues. Note how this is connected to our aircraft. At the time of recording, the R max symbol for maximum range is not available. This appears as a double size line if our maximum range is shorter than the configured self destruct range. If the flight bearing line on the HSI is dashed, you will see the words off axis on the HUD and stores page. This means that our missile is unable to turn to face the desired bearing. Correct this by turning your aircraft to match the bearing. Once we are within 90 degrees, we'll see in zone. We can now launch the missile. Remember that the further the missile has to turn, the more it'll reduce the maximum range, so it's a good idea to launch the missile in the same direction as the intended bearing. We can now release our harpoon, and it'll perform the flight as you've just detailed, starting from when we launch it. Provided a ship is present within the search area, it will automatically target and impact the first one it finds. After dropping a harpoon, you may hear the radar altimeter warning go off, as it detects the missile falling below our aircraft. Because harpoons are free fall launched from our aircraft, you should drop them in level flight and avoid negative Gs, otherwise you risk hitting your own missile. The bearing only release mode is quite limited, but can be used fairly quickly to send a harpoon towards a ship you've visually spotted, or towards a radar emission detected by your radar warning receiver. This can be achieved by flying directly towards the target, estimating ranges for the search and self-destruct, and then inputting the bearing from your aircraft, and then send the missile on its way. Next, we'll talk about fixed point. This functions in a similar way. However, rather than being fixed to your aircraft, pressing the fixed point generates a target point directly in the middle of our search area. So, if for example we create a plan with a search starting at 20 miles and a destruct at 60 miles, 
Pressing the fixed point button will create a reference point at 40 miles. The flight program is now attached to this point instead of our aircraft, automatically adjusting the bearing to ensure that it flies over this fixed middle point. We can then launch just like before. Lastly, for bearing only launch mode, we can use the harpoon turn point. Selecting this button will set our currently active waypoint as the initial point for our missile. It will fly to our waypoint and then afterwards commence our flight program instead of starting it directly from our aircraft. We can see this represented on our HSI. It may be useful to view this from the center display where we can have it overlaid on the map. This shows the path from our aircraft to the waypoint and then the bearing, active and self-destruct ranges and once again you'll see dashed lines if you're out of parameters for either of the turns. You'll need to reduce the turn angle to below 90 degrees to create a valid flight. Harpoon turn points allow you greater freedom to launch the missile on a specific course without having to commit your aircraft to a similar one. You can also use it to launch multiple missiles into the same area. Remember to configure all your missiles with correct bearing and ranges prior to launch as they need to be set individually and they will not inherit the settings from the first launch. When using bearing only mode, it can be difficult to estimate the correct times to launch without having a very wide search area, which can be highly susceptible to attacking unintended targets. Range and bearing launch. Our second target mode is range and bearing launch. This cannot be selected unless we have a designated point already configured. This can come from a designated waypoint, targeting pod designation, or from our air to ground radar by locking a location. The primary method of using harpoons is in conjunction with the radar, but any designation will work. This is also the safest way to use the weapon with a minimal active weapon zone. In this mode, we do not need to configure bearing, search or self-destruct parameters like in bearing only mode. Instead, we only need to set our flight cruise level, terminal guidance and the seeker distance. As mentioned before, the seek setting configures how far before reaching our designated point that the active radar seeker will activate. Small being 5.4 nautical miles, medium 10.8 and large 16.2 nautical miles. So all we have to do is designate the point our target is at, switch to range bearing launch mode, set the flight, terminal and seeker range, then fly ourselves into range and launch. Using range and bearing launch mode, you will receive a time until maximum range queue on the HUD to help launch within parameters. Whilst bearing only will not provide you this information. When released, the missile will fly to the designated point, automatically activate its radar at the set seeker distance, then it will seek out and hit the target, or it will self-destruct if it passes beyond the designated point. We can also make use of the harpoon turn point in this mode, by selecting our desired waypoint, pressing harpoon turn point, and then designating our target. This can be useful if we wish to attack from a specific direction, such as the broadside of a ship. At the time of recording, the air-to-ground radar is not available, however, the functionality is the same. We merely have to designate a radar return that is presumed to be a hostile ship, and then use the range and bearing launch to engage it. Keep an eye out for coverage of the air-to-ground radar feature, and how the harpoon integrates with it when it's finally released. Weapon configuration errors. As briefly mentioned, on both our stores page and the HUD, we have a status message. This can tell us what's wrong with our weapon setup. There are a number of different messages. These include the following on-screen warnings. In zone, launch parameters are valid for release. Out, aircraft altitude is less than 2,500 feet, the minimum release altitude. Off axis, the bearing to the target or search area or harpoon turn point is greater than 90 degrees. Harpoon turn point angle, the total turn angle at the harpoon turn point is too large. Aircraft harpoon turn point. The aircraft is too close to the harpoon turn point. Target harpoon turn point. The harpoon turn point is too close to the search area. Search destruct. 
The distance between the entered search and destruct range is too small. For example, if the search range is greater than the destruct range. And destruct range. The self-destruct range is greater than the maximum range. Weapon Employment Notes Whilst you can use the targeting pod to designate, there are a number of issues with trying to do so. If you are attacking a target over a short distance, ensure that you are low to the ground. If you launch too high, it is entirely possible that the missile will not be able to descend fast enough to reach the target and therefore overshoot it. The missile requires about 10 miles from 20,000 feet to reach its low cruise level. The next issue is the SAM systems on warships can have a greater range than that of your targeting pod's effective ability to find the ship, making the pod only really useful against unarmed targets. I found the missile can reach ranges of up to 90 nautical miles from a high cruise at 35,000 feet, although at this altitude it is easier for radars to detect it. The search area of the Harpoon's own radar is very narrow, and should not be used to sweep the targets. Ideally, you need to know to within a couple miles where your target should be. Whilst there is an altitude warning, there is nothing to prevent you from launching below this height. Failure to adhere to the warning can result in you dropping a harpoon directly into the sea. The harpoon is also vulnerable to being shot down by fleet defences. As such, you will require saturation attacks with many launches in order to overcome systems on larger, advanced ships. We do not currently have any means to target a specific ship or bias the missile to the lead, middle or tail ship in a group, meaning that you will need to space them out manually at different bearings if you wish to attempt multiple ships, and to avoid all your missiles hitting the same ship. Finally, it's best to use harpoons with the air-to-ground radar, as it will provide the most accurate target points at great ranges, with the most current information, meaning that we can ensure minimal risk of the missile hitting an unintended target. Early Access Limitations This release is on the beta branch of DCS for the moment. Whilst all features are more or less present, we're lacking the ground radar and a number of modes and features do not currently work correctly at the time of recording. These should be resolved as they develop further, so you should be able to disregard this section in the future. First, only use low cruise altitude for now. Medium altitude will successfully detect a target, but it cannot dive fast enough to intercept, and a high cruising missile will simply fail to pick up the target altogether. The Harpoon currently has a radar scan range of about 8 nautical miles, out in a cone 60 degrees wide giving it a width of about 8 nautical miles at its peak. It appears that high altitude cruising harpoons simply cannot get close enough to detect ships until after they have passed beyond the radar's limits. The maximum range calculations do not take into account the flight profile or the current altitude and airspeed of the aircraft, and when you launch a harpoon, the program page does not refresh to represent the next harpoon. This can lead to confusion, the program has actually changed, it's just not visually updated. Change a setting or step to the next station to force this information to update. Pop-up terminal guidance is currently unavailable, and the damage model is not correct just yet, leading to low damage inflicted onto targets. For the Harpoon to truly come into its own, we're going to have to wait until the air to ground radar system is modelled, but until then we've got limited ability to accurately hit targets and great care must be taken to avoid collateral damage. I hope you've enjoyed, take care, and happy hunting.